I'm good. It's just that. Um, so Two point three somewhere. Um, are there any public comments or correspondence? Okay. How about executive committee comments? I'd just like to make a request that um, the packet be out more than 48 hours. Yeah, it's a, not a request, it's the way it should be. And the Sunday evening kind of got it. Well, I mean, I'll apologize right now in advance along with that because uh, I didn't write my superintendent's report. It was something I thought I'd have done by today. So will you give a verbal report? I will definitely give a verbal report. Oh, okay. Yeah. But Great. And that's part of why Krista was, she was holding it. So we'll, I think that we'll get the response. Any other comments? Great. Let's move on to the minutes on page two. Is there a motion to accept the minutes from June 18th? Mm -hmm. Chris, any second? Second. Stephen? Any comments? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any nays? Okay, so we're going to move on to Act 46. I wasn't part of the planning of this, so I'm not sure how to frame that. Well, Matt was going to come in and do some of this, so when he and I framed the agenda together, we were actually, this order was very specific to talk about 2122 two, two, and 2-3. So would, would it make sense they're to, all very linked to each other? To table this whole section until Matt gets here, hopefully, and, mm -hmm. and move on to some of the more routine Let me see. Yes. We should do that. I think so. Does special ed hiring fall within it? Was that? Uh, I'm not sure. Is that, that is left over. Um, and we've tabled it for the meeting for you. Okay. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. 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 So we want to deal with 3.1 3. next? No, sure. I think we could do 2.4. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. 2.4. I don't care. We could go with 3.1. Let's, let's go to three one and then we just like the. Uh, so you don't need to do. Or those. The Netflix character you, you don't need to approve because that's a non-licensed position. I'm really sorry. Um, Medicaid clerk is a is a non. It's a, it's a non. It's a. I mean, I want to tell you about it. We hired a Medicaid clerk. We consolidated our Medicaid. It was split between a position here at U thirty two in our office and Bonnie Schwinger. Uh, resigned this spring. It's all funded under the SU, which is a special education position. And so when she um, when she resigned, we found a way to make it so we could take duties off of uh, Renee Bates and have uh, Renee Custer and some other things and have one person do all the Medicaid. And it's actually going to be more efficient. And the ALU was suggesting that. We have a Medicaid, and it was a, it wasn't a change anywhere within the budget. Mm -hmm. it, so it didn't out. change. It didn't create a position. It just reallocated. We reallocated some some time, and oh. some things that Bonnie was doing in U32 are now with someone else. It's okay. So we actually overall across the SU we made two positions into one, okay. or three into two. So you know, it's kind of it's like we're down one. Across the issue between the and Washington. So, uh, I do have a new, um, we have a new special educator that I just offered a position to yesterday that Berlin knows about because we talked on Monday about that. Uh, Amy Ells, who I uh, don't have her on the phone there, so I'm going to see if I can grab that. Uh, yeah, uh, we had talked about it. Filled, the person backed out in May, and then we 
couldn't hire. We just kept trying to find somebody, and it happened literally last week. Um, but that should be when I saw the hiring. I thought that's what we had. So, um, person's been hired, but you would like to our approval. I need approval for the one tonight. Yes, I'm going to try to grab it. I'm trying to make a phone Yeah. Okay. What's the last name? Uh, it's A L E C E E S. I'm going to pronounce it, you know, because I have heard mm -hmm. it. So. I think it was A C C L E S. Yeah. Apples yeah. or apples. Yeah. Apples. yeah. But the Berlin board's been one yeah. of the neighbors or something. So. Okay. I think we're good on that. I'll give you a second to text, and then we'll move on to the superintendent's report. So a lot of my basis of my report for this August is going to be around the special, uh, the professional development that's been going on. We had an excellent professional development in July with a one piece game that involved, um, we had 25 students and we had educators from, that, from around the nation and internationally, a couple from England. And as part of this World Peace Game, which has been supported by the U.S. Department, um, State Department has supported it, and was used as a training for their employees. So they modify it, we are in four different nations, and the kids are given many crises that they have to solve, and it's very much based on tra our transferable skills, and they have to be in place. We had our three seventh grade social studies, um, our three social studies teachers from seventh grade get trained so they can run this with the seventh graders. We also had some teachers from Romney, uh, Ben and uh, Daniel were there because we were trying to figure out what's the progression to get kids ready for that. Um, we had some from other schools as well. So just tremendous where, and our kids acted, Jen Miller's been saying this, our kids acted just like we do. They got very technical right away, had a hard time collaborating right away, couldn't solve anything the first day, tried to come to it from a technical perspective. Wait a minute, it's not a technical perspective. You should be coming at it. So it told me something about our education system is that you need to look at this more holistically. And how do you come at it holistically? It's a part of the pieces. And it was just fascinating. It's so like they just started rolling and they solved, they created a little piece by the <laughs> um, But it's this three dimensional chessboard, which is just, it's phenomenal. There's all these different objects on it that represent different things from armies to environmental problems to uh, monetary problems, just really cool. Um, we had our annual responsive classroom restorative practice trainings that happened. Um, we sent some folks to Math Lab again. Um, that was hosted at Williamstown this year and some Williamstown teachers taught it. Um, and we've had new teachers have been in now for two days for U32 teachers, three days as of today for U32 teachers. They had their two days of restorative practices. And then um, all the new teachers started today, so we have three days. We've had an extra day for that to go over a lot of the work we've been doing with the implementation of the profession. Um, the other update that I would give you outside of professional development is we're in the midst of hiring for a tech director, as you know. Um, we have few candidates, but we have one or two that are very well qualified. So we're conducting interviews in this week. I hope to have a candidate for you soon. So we'll work on that. The principals have had a really good summer and doing a lot of work getting ready for school to start. Um, many of you have been 
talked to them already here at Great Lakes. Um, the other PD that I forgot to talk about, which is really big in this school, is that the project-based learning. Last year, as you know, we had um, the seventh eighth grade teachers went through project-based learning to really create integrated units and projects for kids learning. That's now moving up into the ninth and tenth grade teams. So we have teachers created teams. Um, and they're really excited. I think that went really well. It happened last week for three days. And um, with the job embedded coaching, we use some of that money to bring in outside coaches to coach the teachers in that. Um, but basically, we put like two days a week. So how many did you participate in the project? Uh, I want to say we had about 23 to 25. So how does it work? Did you just have an option, like a menu of options to choose? I, I haven't been through the training myself because it's always the week that I go away for my doctor. In terms of choosing the professional development or the project-based learning track? So within it, the, um, they all come to the project-based learning course and there's the principles of project-based learning and then they adapt that to the coursework and I think they come out with We're in the middle of audit today, that's why we're over here. We just, they really, we just, they really spread out. Mm -hmm. It really just didn't make sense for them to get back here. So, uh, and I told Laura, I said, why don't Is this the first audit with the new audit? It's the second team? audit with this audit team. They were the same one they did last year. They did a pre-audit back in May. Okay. So they'll probably be here through tomorrow and be done. Uh, they have their scanners and laptops and scanning documents. Remember the new auditor came and presented for a bit more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so that. I knew we just changed them. Yeah. So uh, the auditor's here, and uh, uh, things are going well so far. The preliminary reports, you know, things look really well. Look really good. There are folks in Title I and Title II uh, for the federal audit side. Great. That's kind of where we're at right now. Any questions? We're all excited about school. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll wait 10 days out. Right. He's not sitting over at the building. No, I don't think so. Yeah, we did. <laughs> okay. Well, let's keep moving. We'll go to four point two, the director's report on page ten. Um, I a couple things on page ten in that. I'll call it the second paragraph, Bill, right in the middle. Mm -hmm. Average 92 students, K age 22. Yes. Do we have students kindergarten through age 22? Yes, we do. We Why have, so old? Uh, because we're legally responsible for kids that need education up to 22 that have um, their life skills education. And so we have to provide them those supports uh, legally until that age. And uh, those students, we have five students that meet that category. They're past 18, 18, 22. Um, so they, it's part of the Vermont education statute. I just, I didn't know, if I was surprised, I didn't know if yeah. they this print, but they yeah. have 22 yeah. K age. So these are, these are students that may, that they're working on their skills, mm -hmm. and after they leave, they might go into adult supports after they age out. So if they don't have a high school diploma, mm -hmm. Is there any limitations for a student left at age 17 and didn't to be in high school? Is there an age limit that they can come back and re enroll in high school? Uh, there's a one step totally, and I know we've helped many students either work for, for adult basic ed or through us yeah. to complete their high school graduate. Last year was tremendous. We had, not like two years ago, I think it was a yeah, general couple. Was 55. Uh, what John Moe 55 walked across the stage. Good. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
why people will be changing learning opportunities, but I wouldn't say target learning targets are not just we're actually adding more curriculum. I just don't want to make I just want to make sure we're not adding, adding, adding to the plate and it's cutting away into the core that we're going knowledge that we okay. Well the reason we went with this principle alignment with the trying to the skills that we're saying we're ensuring all students graduate with. <clears throat> helps. It helps. Area. It helps. It's a tremendous way to do that. Mm -hmm. No, no, it's a good I'm question. Sure it's valuable. It's just one and a half. I think it's a very good question. Right it's a very really good question. We're not cutting 30 minutes out of math to do that. Oh, no. No. That'll be done. This will be the teams. more of the social studies bucket. Yeah, this will be a social studies demand, but that's why our, that's why Steve and JV and um, Chris were there. Any other questions or comments? Move on to the financial report. So this is the year-end report. This is right? a year-end report. It's being audited right now, but the work that Lori and her team does is so good that um, the this is probably probably is the report after audit. Um, you'll see that there was a little bit more income. And I think that was interesting. Um, on the second, you, you saw the June 2018 back in your June meeting. You see the June 2018 number two, which is June 30th. Um, so there was a little bit more income that way uh, from that. And I think we had, um, close down, see reimbursements. We must have had less reimbursements for special education. I think that goes up to the monthly special education um, reimbursements we get from the state. So I'm just going to go back up. And you'll see monthly that we get our special education reimbursements were down to the district's department. Sorry, I can go over that one more before it's happening. But I can get more in that direct one. But overall for the year, it looks like we've had more savings. Yes, we've had. Than we budgeted. That's right. Yeah, we've we've more, increased, we, we did better than that. Yeah, we increased overall net. We've increased our uh, fund general fund balance for the year. Yeah. Yep. And then you, as a board, have said, "Hey, let's put some of this away." And so you'll see those reserves. You see, we're at three point six percent before we go to the report we reserve money for, and we have for case management, for job coaching, and then the non bargaining benefit analysis, which we haven't started. That's the piece that you... That, that was approved at the last meeting. Right. I wasn't at that meeting. Right, so right. So you said that you gave me up to 26000 to work with. Two, there were two firms that were under that figure. So okay. we were, and we've had to put that up. And they know who contacted me. Okay. Any questions about the... What do we call this? The main... This is the main thing. The main thing. The main thing. The or anything from the other reports? Oh, on the second page of the financial report, um, the reserve for software, physical and PMI, and TBAs, we've got 100 grand set aside. I know that's been bouncing around on exactly what's going to be required or not required. And I, right. I think it was two years ago we were going to put 300. And so we put 100 each year or 200,000 in. Yeah. This, for this end of this year on this report, we'll see only seen in September so there's 200 because that's this fiscal year. We know that the state, we have to go into the state system. Mm -hmm. That's been passed, that was passed in the omnibus bill at the end. What we're trying to do is we really, we're watching Barry. Barry is one of the districts next to, near us that's in the first round of implementation and to see, the state says if you're in the, if you're with us, we're going to give you all the implementation support you need to implement the software. Laura and I are like, yeah, okay, maybe. So, we're watching what Barry gets and what do they have to do on top of it to a lot to the transfer to the software system. Because in the total of that three hundred thousand dollar cost we gave, it's not just the cost for the software, but it was the top cost for the transfer from one financial system to another. We were anticipating we were anticipating one person per year next year at FTE to get us through that software. So we we're at three hundred thousand. We're at two hundred thousand this fiscal year where we currently sit. Um, 
we want to know more from Barry and the other Rutland well, City's another one. Okay. You know, no, how's this go? And then we can tell you what's what is the true cost because we know enough about it. We've seen the RFP from the state, what they're promising for time and support to do the transfer. Just doesn't seem realistic from what we've heard from other districts who've made the transfer on financial systems. Is Barry in? Are they implementing it right now? So right now. So, right so now. we'll know fairly. They're going to be fully up, I think, October or November. So we'll know soon. Yeah. 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 And I mean, John Pandolfo and I talk almost weekly, and Lisa, his business manager, and Laura talk more than weekly because <laughs> I think I come in and hey, Lisa's doing this, or John says, hey, we got this one more. So, so, so does that change our projection in terms of how much we need? You will, it will, will. I just don't. Well, we have to go over the same. It's, so have to go it's required by law. Right. Um, well, is that, was that a change from what it was when we started putting the yeah. aside? We didn't think there, were, there was a chance that we, we could opt in. Okay. Uh, Senator Baruth said he's, I mean, he's really the Senate said we're tired of not getting the financial data we want. So we're now going to demand it that all schools take our system. But we'll know by the budgeting process a little better. Oh, we'll definitely know within that. Yeah. So we have we don't have an option. We, we don't have an option. Okay. So but luckily we prepared. <laughs> we don't. No, prepare. The luckily thing is that the supports don't. If we're looking at the RP, it looks like the time they're allocating for support for transferring is not enough for technical supports from the vendor. So we're hoping that we can buy into that some, and we're going to need anytime I. Laura's seen and talked with her colleagues. I was part of it once at an issue when they changed the financial system. It wasn't just the software. The majority of it was the data transfer, the cleansing of the data, and making sure what's transferring is transferring correctly. Mm -hmm. And that's a lot of checking, cost checking. Mm -hmm. So when I said about we, were, we had in that 300,000, a person, one person, mm -hmm. an extra person for a year, that was part of our cost project. Back to the um, uh, uh, salary analysis, mm -hmm. did we make a request that um, any report that's produced, the data they rely upon is attached? Like if they use any extraneous data and they're just, whatever they're referring to is actually part of the report. So that wasn't in the RFP, so yeah. I'm not sure. It doesn't mean it can't be because I just don't know at this point. Because if we produce a report that makes reference to data, it's not attached to the report, it's kind of like to analyze it. Are you going to analyze yourself? Well, we'll see. Hey, at least I would like to know what they're referring to. Mm -hmm. So, would, uh, would there be any, well, obviously you keep it confidential, but oh, yeah. there be any concerns about it. Well, if, if they like to have confidentiality, it means if it's a proprietary data. Okay. okay. Yeah, and some of it is well known. It's, it's, we told them the benchmark off the state what the public schools have, but we've also talked about some of that industry mm -hmm. for some of the times. <laughs> okay. Anything else about financials? And then we can move on to the policy committee. Rick, are you our representative from the policy? I'm on policy, yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's been a while since we've had a meeting, so we've got to right. have one again. But most of these committees, I think it's yeah. been a little while. I'm trying to think, I, we, we were waiting for, you know, kind of direction from you guys about exactly where we wanted to go. We would talk through, you know, how we were going to prioritize. We've done the required. Right. And right. now yeah, the question is. We're into the, basically, uh, the recommended. And so, uh, we, what we had thought, we would talk through those five at a time or so. We, Alphabetical order, you know, we'll look at them and not and uh, make our recommendations yeah. and then bring those back. We'll try as best we can to unify those. You know, if I'm not that in 99% of the cases, we're going to be able to do that across the history. And then simultaneously, the only thing the, the old numbering system for these is not consistent across the SU, so we're going to. Both staff are going to renumber these as we move. We're going to have a conventional numbering system, so it means the same thing everywhere, you know, at least in that. And then once 
the, there's the big question. There are a lot of policies out there across the SU that wouldn't even be in the recommended. And ultimately, we could just get through the recommended, and then I, you know, I think everyone was saying we would ideally go through, look at those, see if there was there's a reason for that. If you go to those towns, there may be a reason. But if it's if they're not necessary, it's them off the books, and it's extraneous. Okay. If there isn't the need, you know, we would, and that was that was kind of what got hammered around the, uh, the policy committee itself. Yeah. But we can, uh, you know, we'll take guidance from you as much as you let us know if that works for you. Or I would suggest we look at the minutes. I think that came up at a full board, and I think there was. I remember right. having this conversation at the last executive committee oh, meeting I was at, which was, was not yeah. the last one. It was in oh, May. I can't remember. Thing. It's been a while since we've been meeting. And, and the, the meat of that conversation was around would there be any policy that a, a district would have that the SU didn't have in, in common? And, that, and I don't think that we resolved that, but no. that, that was. Uh, I think your approach, your re the, what you're discussing, of, Go through the, we've gone through the required, let's go through the recommended and see what's left, and then we can have discussions. That's exactly right. We may, otherwise, we may be making a mountain out of a non existent hole. I would say we, let's look at what's there, and then, and then that would be my recommendation. That seems logical. Does anybody want to weigh in on that? My limited experience being on that committee, and being involved in it, I think. To me, I defer to the policy committee on the, how they want to do things and handle it. I commend them that they're working and they've got an involved group. Yeah. And I just mostly want to stay out of their way and say, go right. at it. I mean, here, here. There's all We're kinds, of, to there's all kinds of targets to go after. Yeah. You know, as far as I'm concerned, pick the ones that you think are the best and go at yeah. it. Yeah. That's what we'll, we're trying to use our judgment on it. And we're trying to be disciplined about keeping it moving. Bill's helping with that a lot, you know, so we'll be, you know, like three to five per, per meeting that we'll look at, and we'll try not to drag our feet on this. We need to just get it cleaned up, and if we run into the skies, we'll come back to you. Okay. So, Bill, I'd be curious to see your take on why this has changed from individual boards, words, I'm so glad we've gotten away from that because that's kind of what was happening when I first got on the policy committee three or four years ago. We kind of have, we've made that shift and I'm glad it's happened. I'm just curious as to why you think it's going so well now. I think, it's <laughs> I think it was uh, I think it was a smart move by the policy committee when they said let's use the VSBA templates and get the that's where practices started. out of there and we're yeah. going to use those and what we're going to say and what we're going to say is this work. That was, I think, that question right there, will this work for us? Instead of worrying about what does every word mean. And I think part of that was when Emily Simmons came and talked to the, when we were there for that. Yep. And Emily said, you know, if you start changing words, you're going to start changing me. So I'm glad that, that the progress is. is well, we are, we're not locked into VSBA. I mean, at least, no, I three, that. Three, at least three of the members on that committee. You know, we're not locked there. Right. I, I agree with you. We should go for as much absolute consistency as we can. And I'm not sold on the fact that there still might be times. Yeah, and that's, I'm just I'm not very open to that. I'm not going to. Every one of these is not going no, for the no, boards no. for detailed wordsmithing work. Frankly, I don't think the boards want to do that anyway. Yeah. I, you know, this, we have enough to show. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of mess. That's great. Keep on, keep on. All right, seems like you have the support of this group. Do you, do you need anything more to eat? No, we'll just go, we'll work for it. If we have problems, we'll come to you. Yeah. Okay, great. Well, thank you. Uh, school quality, uh, more in the same boat. We have not met since late May. Um, and basically, our whole charge this year is to support goal number two. So maybe I'll talk about that a little bit more when we get to board goals. Um, but the main the main thing is around um, monitoring, and we're monitoring on the student learning outcomes specifically. And this fall, we'll be getting a new report. And one of the things the committee will do is 
sort of frame up some discussions that will happen at, certainly at the SU board level, but then hopefully also at the district board level, um, and then somehow synthesize those discussions into a plan for action. Some goal will emerge from those discussions that we can um, use for planning and budget next year. But it's a pretty tight timeline, so um, Bill and I are going to um, meet in a couple weeks to, to get, get into the, the detail of that. Otherwise, I don't really have anything about the school quality. Any questions? How will we do some monitoring then? Well, so last year we did a um, student learning outcome monitoring report in the fall, mm -hmm. and then we did a financial report, asset protection report, in associated with the audit. That was in March. Yeah, I mean, it, this is, gets your question kind of gets into the policy governance discussion mm -hmm. because one of the things that when I worked with the policy but governance board is there was monitoring that happened every month of mm -hmm. different policies. You know, I was going to say it was placed on the retreat where right. he was talking about monitoring every two weeks, I thought. Yeah. Well, that yeah, yeah, in terms the of the student part, yeah, student yeah, part. In, the, in the school system. Right. <laughs> um, so the, um, the monitoring, you know, what happens, at least my experience, and Stephen and Kari chime in, anyone else that's been in policy governance, but there's a calendar that's made in. So you know which policies you're monitoring and you're, you're seeding the reports, and you've been really good about saying, hey, let's not jump in too fast. So, because from your experience, the conversation you and I've had about is once you, once you build the first report, the next ones are a lot easier. So you right. have a template mm -hmm. for that area, for that policy, so we, we were doing student learning. So it's that calendar of knowing what we're monitoring and being thoughtful about that uh, across the whole educational system. So my question is, is where Folks on to outcomes um, and improvement. We've seen that we want more monitoring on that right. Um, right. throughout the year. Okay, right. so our goal this year was to have two reports: two student one reports. in the spring mm -hmm. and one in the. In, you know, the and you receive one in the spring and at the running board. Right, right. the local right. boards. Yeah. yeah. So, yes, more. And it, what I think what we're doing is starting to build a system mm -hmm. so that it's not once or twice a year or big push. It's part of what we do, if not monthly, on a regular basis. Right. And, and it's really about the system. I mean, I think right. your evaluation is a type of monitoring, but it's very focused on you, whereas what we want to learn here is about there, There's also, system. you don't want to misuse assessments. So what Nate was talking about is the frequency of formative assessments that go along with the student, mm -hmm. so that every two weeks is really important there. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't get aggregated up into an overall system across the whole system. I never, I haven't been in a system where that's happened. Well, usually, when I've seen this type of student monitoring that's going on by board, it's during the benchmark assessments, which happen fall, winter, and spring. So, uh, because that's formative assessment, assessment for the that goes between the student and the teacher. So we try not to gather that into a program, program assessment. And we use the benchmark assessments that we do. So, are those formative assessments? Um, do you think some of them preserved anywhere, or is it just kind of a, a check-in? They're preserved in different different ways. I mean, some are paper, some are electronic. Mm -hmm. It depends on the intervention you're doing with the kid. And, um, you know, I could look at some things that happen here at U32, they're done electronic, and, and some things at the school, at the elementary school is electronic, and some are on paper because there might be a running record that's done for a reading reading comprehension and I'm not trying to, it's a way of I'm not trying, it's about the correct use of assessment for me it's not about trying to keep data from the board it's about trying to think about what's the right use of assessment not suggesting that. no I just want to be clear that it's yeah. about we don't want to misuse assessments right. and that's what's happened too much in the US we said oh we got an assessment over here so now we're going to use it for this mm -hmm. and it's like that wasn't the intent of how it was designed and we can use the benchmark assessments because there's there's more norm and more standardization across the assessment. Okay. Any other questions? So then we'll move on to school start time committee. Do we have any representatives in that committee here? Or just as a minute. Yeah. And Bill, you've been part of this. Yeah, I've been part of this session. I can tell you they haven't set a meeting yet. Um, Karen and I haven't had a 
chance to talk about it. Um, and one of the things that we don't need to talk about now, but might be a good time in September, is the amount of weight and priorities we have with our different SU committees. Okay. Are there any questions or comments about that? And the last one is negotiations. Yeah. So we're um, we're going to be reopening the negotiations by September 15th as we changed healthcare uh, this past year and we had a change in the HR, HRA issues in our management company we did that. We'll be reopening this current year, this calendar year coming, the, F, the 2019 year for about how we're managing the HRA process. Because I had to change when we came to an MOU with the association. So right now we have uh, Johnny and S uh, Susanna are uh, scheduling a meeting with myself and the association presidents to kind of map that out. There will also be starting negotiations for the FY20 school year. And in the omnibus bill that was passed through the legislature, and FY21, all health care is handled by the state. It's negotiated through the state not the EA. Through a committee that the government that's been appointed that has equal representation of uh, VSBA and teachers to figure out what health care is going to be for all systems in the city. So, there, so that would, there would, you're talking about kind of a universal, and that probably makes some sense. I'm going to say, if we did, if we ran into this problem now with this contract running out, will we, we, we do anything to, we're not running out, but kind of falling off money, is there anything we can do? moving forward to kind of prevent that from happening so that we aren't caught with our pants down. Is that a, is, I don't know if there is or not, I don't know. If that, that I don't know, I don't have an answer for you, right? Uh, you know, it's, we, got, we basically need a year and a half patch, and then the state has it. And then the state's got just it. In the state. state. Uh, just in healthcare, we need to figure out what we're going to do with our contract and negotiations. We have both for ESP and for teachers. So it kind of goes away in a year and a half, the issue. The healthcare issue goes away. Yeah. Because it's done at a higher level yeah. across the whole state. Which is good. Yeah, I think it is a good thing. I think it's a good thing that it's one system. And I'm glad to which side of the table you're on, I guess. No, I, the no I don't think. I, Maybe depending on the outcomes. I mean, I think, I think the give to get to get the statewide system the governor wanted was that there was an equal balance of, because right now with Beehive, there's only one teacher representative. Mm -hmm. And so the give to get or to get the statewide system was to have an equal balance of three representatives that are teachers. It can be not they have to be non-staff members, it can't be non NBA staff members. Mm -hmm. And VSBA, and it can't be VSBA staff members. Okay. And there's, no balance there. there's an equal balance of six and three and three. So I think that was the gift to get. But you're gonna be in addition to everything else that's going on this year, you're gonna be negotiating. Yes. <laughs> That's why I was Full talking about that, both. That's why my, my question about probably in September we're gonna be talking about priorities. Because I think we can we can we can overwhelm the board numbers as well. I'm not saying that just for myself in a selfish way, but just another year's we had all this. It's a question of priorities we can talk to. When is the negotiation open picking up Uh we have it in our MOU that we're opening September fifteenth. Is that just kind of like we want more broadly? Uh, we actually said we'll start with healthcare and then go, go to mm -hmm. the, the future contract. Mm -hmm. And we signed that back in May. Okay. Questions? All right. I think we're going ahead. I tried to get a hold of Matthew. I tried texting and calling and having a So I hope it's okay. Okay, so all the boards approved the one page response? They did. The Berlin did theirs. Monday night. Okay. So that was sent. Yeah. And then today was the verbal. Today hearing. was Scott, Floor, and Matthew. That's why I was waiting for him because he was part of that presentation to the state board. Uh, Chris and Rick were there. Yeah, there. You, Dorothy, were there. How would you characterize it? Went? Quite well, I thought. So, like, I, well, I, I, I couldn't hear a lot because they didn't speak into the microphone. Right. But one of the board members. Asked uh, Matt, I think it was John Carlton asked him if the debt went away, 
you know, why wouldn't you consolidate? And that did very well, basically said, I'm not going to go in the budget place. Then he kind of answered it too. <laughs> then, he, then he kind of answered it too. <laughs> yeah, he said we would consider we would consider consolidation. He didn't say yes or no, but it, it was an awkward question. Make it easier to consider. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he was saying if if the debt issue went away, would you vote to consolidate? I think it's more direct. Yeah, I think it's John Carroll. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, uh, and well, I don't want to answer a hypothetical. Uh, and he goes, but there's a lot of discord in community discord. Yeah. I think is how yeah, it's yeah, that that I, I, I can't say we would have, but the dead was an issue. He also did very well, I thought, you know, in the question about, well, you didn't put this to a vote in your community, so how do you know how your communities feel about this? And a bunch of people were ready to jump out of their chairs when and we did. And we did. And we did. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they said, we support this. We are engaged. Yeah. 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 Matt, um, Matt, 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 and you can clearly see there was a very clear bias away from that. They, you know, basically anything, there was very little pro-consolidation coming out of the audience, you know, by, and, and obviously from those groups, the groups represented there, but anything like the early presentations by Addison and by Chittenden County, the school there, you know, they were nodding and agreeing and mm -hmm. kind of, and I, and then I saw a whole lot of sarcastic eye rolls and a kind of, I was watching very carefully, so you can. There's a strong bias the other way. I wouldn't on the board. Oh yeah, on the board. I think we've got a hard. I mean, I wouldn't be at all surprised to see that. It depends on how. I mean, people are fairly forceful about it. They're not happy. Now, I don't know how much, how protected they think they are in this. You know, where they're. Okay, so. We, we, uh, I'm not sure where this was meant to go, but I think part of it was was to get to this conversation. It's the next one that's on the SU budget process. So, so it was to really say, I'd like, I'd like to spend a little more time with yeah. this kid. That's fine. In terms because, of what comes next. Well, I had a couple of concerns. Not concerns. Could you speak up? I got yeah. this fan in my a couple ear. Of, a couple <laughs> of turn it off. Do I No, I can. I have a couple of yeah. interests. Yeah. And, and foremost, I would like, and I think it has to come from the executive committee. I, and it won't be tonight, but I don't want an opportunity to come to a, some kind of an agreement with Twinfield not to be explored. And it, it's nothing to do with however we end up governing ourselves. They're interested in partnering with someone in some manner. And so that's a double negative. Can we put that well, Matt alluded to that today. But I, I would like us to, to figure out how we could begin discussions with yeah. Twinfield. For sure. And I would suggest the only way we can move forward is a specific recommendation from the executive committee to the full board. To explore that, to explore that, and to create a group that can explore it, because individual boards can't explore that. So would we want to, but even before that, explore how it can make sense for us um, to have a relationship with them, uh, and just, just. Because when, when we ended up going down to uh, Roxbury. Roxbury. Uh, so I'd say it's a very different situation. Yeah. I mean, Mark Tucker and I have talked quite a bit. I mean, he called in July, right after the report came out, said, you know, we want to talk. I mean, they were ready to get to a conversation right then. That's why Matt knows about it. Okay. We want to get in this conversation. We want to be with someone. Pat, the board chair, said, 
re grade reconfiguration is not off the table for Springfield. Grade? grade reconfiguration. Okay. As we're losing students at U32, I'm all ears on that one because they have 150 high schoolers. I'd be thinking about that. I think that's the main reason. You at least want to we'll discuss. Yeah. If we can get 150 more students in our high school, it, this it makes a dramatic change. It's a well, unique opportunity to, to, to take a look at this. Yeah. Okay, but it's not a. I mean, you know, it's, no, it's going to give up 150 students for nothing, right? No, no, no. I mean, yeah. you, you don't know. You don't know. You've got to have the conversation to say, you know, is is that or is it? It's you know, high schools specializing in something, mm -hmm. you know, or I mean, to me, that's the the great conversation you can have about what are the opportunities that can be made, um, and you know, what are the what are the possibilities, not a you know, what are, what can we do, but what can we do, mm -hmm. and how can we talk together about what would be best for all the kids. Um, I mean, Stephen and I, Stephen Delger, Peyton and I, talked about many times. Um, you know, we there's been a lot of there's been over three hundred fifty thousand dollars worth of cuts in this place in the past three years. You know, even though the budget's gone up, we would be much higher if we kept the same staffing levels. So it's only going to get and it's only going to it's going to get much worse. So we're restricting programs out here, and so we're trying to find a way to stabilize. This building's built for nine hundred twenty-five students, and we currently have seven hundred and fifty. But I see no downsides downside of starting and looking. No, I, I agree with that. Yeah, so you have to have the conversations, so, and it may not be the first place. That, I don't think it is the first place, but Pat was pretty, Patrick was pretty. Um, the board chair? He's the board chair. Yeah, and he's like, this, that isn't isn't off the table. We'd like to talk about it because we want to find a way to provide opportunities for our kids. So, and it may be that. You know, there may be something, a different way. I mean, I can think of a lot of different possibilities. They still have a high school. There's a way for kids to move back and forth. There's specialization. Some kids do better in a smaller environment than in a bigger environment. You know, you, there's lots of conversations we could have there. And how can we do that? My, my thought, the reason I brought it up, is that we could tonight authorize our chair to talk to their chair about I'm just the framework, you know, is that something you're interested in? And then, yeah, there is an interest. Let's start to explore how that framework would look in a timetable. And then Matthew can come back and say there is an interest. Here's some preliminary questions or some preliminary thoughts, and then we can get it started. I would just hate to wait so long that we lose any opportunity. And I'm not convinced. I'm, I'm not advocating that's what we want to do. I'm just ad advocating let's not wait too long and then not have a choice. I'd rather explore it and then well, Matt make a decision from strength. Today. And he said, you know, I, think, I don't know if it was in the answer. To Scott, Scott was actually the one. We'd like to talk okay, about well, Kathy. Anyway, they, they yeah, 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 we yeah, 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 so let's, let's just then let's do the application and, and ask them to yeah. move forward. And then you want a specific, so yeah. the executive committee would authorize um, our chair to make contact the Twinfield um, School Board chair to explore um, possible collaboration. Yeah. And just leave it general. So then at least we're getting the ball rolling. And I think it would end up in this consultation with superintendents mm -hmm. to make no. sure. Yeah, yeah, we, you know, just so yeah. that's an if assumed. You want, if you want that, to me, that's assumed. Okay. But if you want that in the motion, because no, no, Mark, no, and, I, I, Mark and I have had that conversation. This is unsafe. Yeah. Yeah. We both Is everybody clear on the motion? Is there a second? Thank you. Great discussion. Are we going to include Cabot or just to Maybe do another time. Yeah, I'm going to go with Chris's right now. Just because Kevin may have, again, not to be mercenary uh, no, here, but Kevin may have more need than we we're willing to bear. Like, prior, oh, I see. prior experience, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm not sure how well Twinfield and Kevin 
close yeah. playing together. Yeah, they're having a time. So 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 we we the we get together in there. Twinfield okay. yeah. voted yes, and Danville and Cabot voted no. Yeah. And then the report, the secretary's report, actually has Danville and Cabot going the other direction and leaves yeah. Twinfield alone mm -hmm. to figure it out with well, either us or Barry. Yeah. Right. At one other time, I, I had just suggested it. To suggest it, but I think one of the, one of the times to get it. Yeah, yeah. Sounds good. Okay. Okay, so all those in favor say aye. Aye. Um, aye. Any nays? Okay. Um, when, when does this group meet next? We meet on uh, September. We have a carousel in September. With him. With him. So the we, last week of summer. Yeah, last week of September. So we, they were the week before, so I just thought okay. yeah. We meet the 19th, the full board, and with carousel meetings, we meet on the 26th. You, can I suggest something in terms of uh, Matthew meeting, potentially meeting with Winfield? Uh, given the report today, because the state board and the expectation that we're going to hear back from them sometime in October or November. Um, I think this sense of urgency in terms of if anything's going to happen to it, I think it will happen sooner rather than later, um, just for the purposes of uh, updating the state board. Oh, okay. Yes, by uh, their September meeting, which would be the, their September meeting would be the 19th. Who's? The state board, it's maybe the third Wednesday of the month. Okay. Um, and so is there any sense of having a meeting sooner? Um, then all of a then well, we, we, we would like, I think, Matthew to speak with their board chair prior to the 17th. And this board, this week. No questions? No, I, no, I'm Matthew to do it probably. Oh, you mean 17th? I think, knowing Matthew, 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 Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I, I mean, to me, and I mean, I've worked with Bill some, I don't think there's anything to preclude after Matt has that meeting <coughs> that he, he couldn't come in with a report on it of the meeting, but potentially, I, I see no reason with him hearing what he hears to come in with a recommendation that we met, I heard, I think this might be the way for us to move forward to do whatever it is. At least it's, it presents a starting point for our discussion instead of him reporting and then we all sit here and kind of brainstorm and it takes us an hour to come up with something. If, if he brings in a suggestion that gives us a starting point, then Matthew and I have a lot of confidence in. I, I could see him bringing in a brilliant suggestion that we're all like, oh, wow, that's a great idea. All in favor? I'm not suggesting that it goes through, but then it gives us a, a starting point so we're not delayed too long. And I, to Chris's point, because of the timing of the state board, I can see Matt, I can see Matthew and Patrick and Mark and I getting together somewhere in the next week or two. And it's probably more two weeks till we want to get in services are being week, and then once the schools are gone, we can do that. But then to say, hey, Matthew says, you know, it might be good to have a special executive committee meeting. Okay. Call one. Say, okay. Yeah. Let's have a conversation. Yeah. yeah. All right. Did you have another thing you wanted to no, talk about? No, I can wait for the 2.2. Um, kind of I just asked the question of Bill before the start because I'm confused. But if the decision is to consolidate the boards into one, what would be the timing with next? Springs elections, and Bill's response was, "Well, we, we could be voting on the new consolidated board in March, right. and we could also be voting on our individual okay. district you, boards have, as a transition." You'll have to have both operating at the same time. I actually wanted to do a timeline for you a little bit because this will help us for the budget. So I could put up some Act Forty Six dates that we know. And some of these other milestones, because I need some, I need some questions answered not tonight, but in September, from this group about budgeting. In terms of when to do it, or when it? both, okay. both, because there's limited resources, and 
we've pared down over the past four or five years, we've really slimmed things down. So we don't have a lot of resources to throw at certain times. So if that's a place we're ready to go, I can do a little, I was just gonna do it right up here on the whiteboard, just do a little calendar so we can all see it. Sorry, I don't have any hand up. You don't wanna do it tonight? Well, I wanna show it, I wanna show the calendar tonight. Oh, you do, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, right now? Um, so the state board, as you all know, has hearings through 9-19, so that's a September time period. And Bill, do you know whether they're not going to make any determinations? They're not. Because they've already heard until after they've heard They're not doing the whole, the whole thing at once. Okay. So the state, state law says by November, Thirtieth, there has to be a state plan that goes into effect. So that's when the state, the, the state board has to come out by that time for the plan. Um, so the and in Act Forty Six, operation. happens on July 1, 2019, otherwise known as FY 2020, okay? So we could have something, I'm just going to put March Town Meeting in here. So these are kind of like Act 46 dates. March 5th. Is that March 5th? Thank you. Okay. So here's been some traditional budget dates that we've been doing. And Lori and I quickly roughed this out this afternoon. You can see it's in the rough notes here. Um, Usually, in September, and I'm going to put WCSU budget, and and I can get this all in a typed up sheet for you and send mm -hmm. it to you, okay? Um, and then local budgets. So in September, budget direction. October, budget version one. And all of you have been through this, so I'm not, I'm doing it really quick. So if I say something and you're not, not quite sure, please stop me. Um, November, budget version two. And first week of December, WCSU, Board adopts. That's been kind of our history. Um, usually we do some talk about budget even now in this meeting. Some years we have in August and some years we have. Local budgets, October direction. And I would say 99% of the time the direction has been bring us a level service budget. Okay? November, draft one. December, oh, wrap the one over here. Draft two. If necessary, in January, there's a draft three and adopt. Um, and then the voting town meeting day vote. Okay. Um, and then this has elections of the local board boards as well. 
Your real deadline is the print deadline, right? Right, which is so it's actually. Which is, when is that? It's in, <laughs> we always say March 40 day next. Right. Yeah, you gotta we you actually our town, I would say this, and I think our town clerks would not like me to say this, because you don't have to print your budget for 40 days. All you have to do is warn the election. Mm -hmm. So there are school districts in the state of Vermont that come out with their budget in February. I'm not advocating that. I'm just giving you an information point of information. Um, I actually think we do a really good job communicating to our public about where our budgets are in Vermont, so I, I don't want to upset that. Um, so if we, now if we were to have the piece of all this is if we were to vote, as you were saying, Kari, for um, a merged board, we'd also be voting for a merged budget. doesn't have to happen here, but the, re the closer you get to this operational problem, if a budget vote goes down, you have more and more problems. So the nice thing about this is you at least have two cycles of a budget vote with this time of time period when a budget goes down. It was time for a second vote. A second vote. Right. A, for a second vote and a third vote. You could actually do that. Is that because of the time between each? Yeah, you had to have 30 days at least between, mm -hmm. the, between each one. Um, so the, and I might be off on the 30 days, but there's, I, I calculated it before. Yeah. It works. Yeah. It works. It's close. It's like you're in a June 18th, 20th period for that second repo if you have to go to the second repo. Um, if there's a merge board, you would need you would still need boards operational, local boards operational, not only to July 1, but probably down to about September or October. Talking with my colleagues who've been superintendents with having going to a merge process, there's small little work the board has to do past the fiscal year ending. It's usually like one or two meetings, but you still need to pay bills and get things done. Um, and you need a board starting before operational to do policies and a couple other setups. There's not a, there's not a lot of have-tos. There's a lot of, it would be a really good idea if you did this, but in the have-to list, um, and I've talked to a colleague, David Younce, who's the superintendent in Rockland South, they were one of the first districts to merge, but they did it three months. And he's actually for that, because you get what you have to get done, and then the whole next year you get the must, what would be really nice to have done. Um, and some people who take a whole year, they're working not only on the must, but what would be nice, and that can be a little long. Um, and I think it depends which superintendent you ask what you need. Um, but you have to have both, my whole point of saying is you have to have both you have to have a merge board and local boards running. Mm -hmm. if, if the decision is to merge and work, then we would be voting on a single budget in March. Right. But we would build that budget presumably by individual so, units. So here, here's the way, this is this is my big question. So we get out right about, I didn't put what we do with the principals, but usually right about here, we're starting to build budgets and build somewhere in September. It's usually the second leadership team meeting, which is the third meeting in September. They get their budget binders, they've got their requests, go work with your staff, figure out what you need. Kelly's building the special ed needs for everybody. Those go back, the, you know, the principals adjust them with her. Um, and so we can build as individual units. I don't need a decision as they're building as individual units. But Here's the problem. If I wait until if we wait until November 30th, and Lori and I were talking about this today, I said, I see in our timeline you really have one bird. We'll get budgets. The board's on the second, and there's one redo of the budget. No matter whether they're local or merged. Now, so I don't need a decision from you today as an advice which way to go, but in October I'm gonna need. We need some to say, how do we, and I'm not trying not to pressure you today, I just want to give you time, but I do need some support, and I'll even call it direction, of how do we want to do this process? The pieces of doing it piecemeal and then going to a merged budget, we're not going to be looking, I don't know if we're going to have time to look for a lot of efficiencies. And that's okay, we can wait for another year to do that. Can, can we not individually approve these budgets and then have you roll them up into yeah, one? Yeah, we can, we can do that. 
we can do that. I just want to, it, we'll be building it as individual entities as we have, right. instead of asking. Right. But the actual board approval, we can only approve our individual point budgets. Right. But then we're asking. So if we go to a merge, merge budget, I, I actually haven't had this discussion with any super, so like, you don't have a board, so how do you get to a merged budget vote? And they, I think the only thing I've had inferred to me that that just happens from the board you have right here. Well, that's a legal question. I yeah, think. I think that's what we have to ask our attorney. For on the efficiencies, you've got the ability, and you build, you're really using that idea where you roll up individual budgets, and you don't have the efficiencies. If that were to happen, you know, where we get consolidated, you've rolled up kind of those individual pieces. When well, we have that latitude to modify that budget, I mean, if we gain efficiencies, we're, it may cost money in, other, in some areas and it's going to save money in others. I mean, yeah. that budget isn't cast in stone. No, no, so no. You I mean, mean the, yeah, you know as well as I do, right? Yeah, the these budget are, these are bond. bond. It's exactly. 28 million for the That's SGA. exactly what I'm saying. So, I mean, essentially, it doesn't really. Right. I'll accept working for a right. it just no. are you, are you give me that bottom line. Right. Potential shortfall. What do you mean plus? Well, meaning that if there's consolidation and there's more expense than anyone anticipated, that is not incorporated into the individual budgets and then the individual budgets are just added on to each other and you have more expense because it's kind of constant edge and you have a shortfall instead of a Good. potential um, Good. fund yeah. balance. Yeah. Can. Yeah. I mean that's when you get to the merge, everyone's fund balance is coming into right. all the assets, all the assets, and it all the liabilities. It wouldn't make for happy, happy campers if the money came out short after going in a consolidated way. <laughs> it's like it's like unintended like, expenses. Yeah. You never yeah. know. That would not be good. That's a really good thing to think about. That, that, that would not be good. But is that a concern? I mean, in terms of uh, so going, my, going my concern way? is, is um, It's in the budget should yeah, no, take no, care yeah, of the no, operation as well. I'm just trying to think of my, my yeah. wording. My concern is the transfer from one system to another. It's not that once we're in the new system, it's the transition. It's getting to it. So one of the nice things with Lori, she recoded the whole budget system as we had to. So again, state statute, we have to go to a statewide new coding system. So that's going to help us a lot because of the way the codes are set up and to bring those into one entity is going to be a lot easier. She's been saying that since May. You know, we're really set to bring those codes in and help do some of that work. Um, that, I mean, there's going to be things like this. There's got to be, you know, we got to reset all our bonds. we got to reset all our checking, all our, all our bank accounts. We have to reset... Um, all our legal entities. So there's just work there that's going to be there with an attorney. And when I talk to people about the 150,000 they got because they went to the preferred model, they said they chewed up about 100,000 of that in supports of legal slash accounting type work to get to that new entity. Well, that's part of our budgeting process. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, we have so you could decide, and this is a decision you could make is do we want to take that out of fund balance? Because I will say, everyone and Rummy's much better than it was at the beginning of last year. But of all the, all the schools are doing pretty well fund balance wise. Right. And we would definitely want to budget for that. I mean, as far as you know, and for that contingency. Yeah. Kind of but being a one-time expense, I would recommend to you as a superintendent take it from your fund reserves. Balance. Don't. Yeah, yeah. Don't. Yeah. That's kind of what that's functionally for. One of the reasons. Yeah. One of the reasons. Not so I will get this typed out for you in a more in a matrix in a column so you can and get it spaced correctly so you can kind of see how that looks. But um, and when you try to get some um, advice on can the communities vote on a single consolidated budget that was approved? I, I, can, ask I can ask that. I can ask. I can ask. I think that's actually been done. It's been done. I think it's way they've done. done. And it's at the and board, and local boards have approved. So make sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so there, there ought to be another column on this, which is, but that's the budget side, and then there's more of the governance side. The governance side that needs to go So yeah. what are the articles, I'm just gonna the write bylaws, that right. how do we elect, what does the board look like, what's the makeup of the board, who's, you know, what are we electing in March if, if it comes to that? And then from there, you know, policies and... Well, could, could I ask that we stay on the budget for a minute? Yeah. So, 
I want to understand what direction you're asking for. Well, I think my my direction is, and we were talking it out there. We can roll this up as individual entities. Do do the budgeting process the way we've been doing. All the schools look for the entities and then just roll it up in one big budget if, we, if we're going to emerge or we have it set for the way we've been doing it. And then we wait a year to say, what are the possible savings to ask if we are merged and we're in one governance system that we couldn't realize from where we were before? And that might just be the only way to do it because we may not be able to see those without being in one board as a group. It's too complex. Yeah. Yeah. But what I heard from kind of you and Rick was the, the concern is, will our budget have enough money? So what, Rick, what, what I was talking about was answering Chris's question. Like, what if you go into a deficit? Okay, there's something you didn't anticipate. Mm -hmm. And what I answer is, what I'm concerned about is the transition costs. Right. I didn't use that I, I understand. And I, my recommendation, it, we can budget for it, as Rick said, but to use fund balance to pay for those transition costs instead so, of tax, so tax rate mean, dollars. If you think that is, if you've got some relative confidence in in, in if I survey eight or ten superintendents went through it and said, tell me what your actual costs were. Yeah, that's good. So we'll be able to get that. Because it's really about organizations. It's not about the number of students. Mm -hmm. It's the number of organizations you've got to combine. Because for me, process-wise, and that's how I think, um, we, we just we approach our budgets the way we always approach our budgets. And then if they're separate budgets, they're separate budgets. If it has to be rolled, mm -hmm. it's rolled in, into one. In my mind, the way we're doing budgets now is the same way we're going to do budgets, even if we're merged. Each building is going to do its own budget. Mm -hmm. And then that information is going to come together centrally, and that will inform what the overall budget's going to be. Am I correct? I mean, well, there won't my, be, not the there won't be boards. There won't be boards, but that will be built locally. So, so and in some districts, they don't do that anymore. I would not well, assume okay. that. I agree. Okay. Well, if we elected to still continue to build the budgets at the building yeah. and set up a system to allow that, I mean, she, right. she, she, it yeah. would be we'd be doing what we've always done. Right. is essential way right. of doing it. I, I don't see a way this year around doing what we've always done and then either it goes, you know, to, to votes as individual budgets the way it's always done, or if it can't be that way and it needs to be one budget, we just roll them together. Yeah, we'll be well into the process before we even I know what the decision is. There's no other way we can do it I, that I see. We, we just got to approach this business as usual and, and the assumption is, until we hear from the state board on the 30th, even if there's inclinations one way or the other, we have to proceed with what we know, and what we know is it's business as usual, so we need to prepare for that. One, yeah, one thing I would say, and there, an advantage, an advantage to tracking individually too. We run into this in the state. I mean, it's, it, it actually becomes easier to identify problems that you've got. When you start, once you're very careful in the way you collect, you know, you wash everything together and you don't necessarily see problems arising in spots. You know, those numbers tend not to flush out. We really run into it. I know certainly in that operational maintenance side of buildings where I work, it's a very big problem. And, but I don't know, you know, part of this is, you know, only a, part of, a small part of this is the operational maintenance of buildings. There's the educational component in this, which is a whole different. So there, there are some things that are fixed costs that aren't so attributed to student numbers, right? Buildings being one, but there's actually some educational services that are yeah. too. Yeah. And then there's some that are variable for student numbers and class sizes. And there have been some districts, Champlain Valley's actually rolled into a model, and they were talking about that today at the state board, where they say instead of where, you know, you you've got a bunch of people that are leaving, and like wait a minute, I got to big extra money here because I'm gonna have lower personnel costs now I'm gonna use it for something else. They actually talk about where does that money need to flow because there might be some another program in the whole system that needs that money more than just and that's without even changing the tax the total expenditure. Mm -hmm. You know, you lose someone that's 
master's 15, 16, you know, 30 years of experience, and you go to someone who's a master's zero or five years of experience, there's a $20,000 savings there. Mm -hmm. Okay, what, uh, do you need anything else? Okay. No, I have enough. I just wanted, I wanted to outline the problem. I didn't really need a and for you to understand. So it looks, but I'm noticing by everyone's interactions, you understand where we're at. And that's really This was really good. helpful to see it yeah. visually. So I'm going to I'm gonna take a picture of it, and then I'm going to uh, have it made in a, a you, document for you. Will you add a, a governance call? That's why I wrote it up there, so I can well, remember can, from my picture. I, I'm not against going to that now. I just didn't want to move on to anything else. I, I don't know that we have time to, I mean, I think we know what's involved. I mean, we've got an idea anyway, articles, bylaws, elections, policies, and a lot of communication. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A lot of that has to take place before. Okay. Doing, like, doing bylaws and, and, and Bylaws would have to have articles before election, right? Yeah, the articles of agreement. So, so, is that here's, so, here's, a, so I mean, here's yeah. the thing. I think. I think I believe, and I have this is in Act 49, not in Act 46. So I've got to go and keep 49 as much on top of my head. They'll come out. The board will come out with sample bylaws on the 30th, and 60 days to either come up with your own or to go with theirs. I, I need to look at that. So I could be it could be 90 days. Right. 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 Is it ninety? Uh, from the article. I yeah. don't know about the bylaws. I just don't remember. Who would adopt the bylaws? It's that's a good question. <laughs> I'd have to go. The SU board. No. Been done before. Yeah. A lot of, I don't know. We get a, we get a lot of questions in our office about the bylaws. You can't you, you can't have a board be on an election and yeah. the bylaws will yeah. determine the that election. That part of the law was. wasn't exactly thought through well. <laughs> well, so what I waited for for this discussion <laughs> has to do with governance and has to not do with budget, but money. Just as I was, my feeling was we should be outreaching to Twinfield to start discussions, regardless. Is it prudent prior to the 30th to to, to get a, a group together <laughs> um, to begin discussions around the article of agreement on debt. I think everything. That's just not debt. Well, it right. could be more than that. But to, to me, yeah. debt is, is like super. It because I, I think I think I'm fair in saying there's strong consensus, no matter what town you're in, we want to come up with a fair way to handle the debt. I know I speak, I feel confident speaking for each one earlier, which has a big debt. People aren't looking to unload the debt. Well, maybe a few. But in general, <laughs> I don't think people are looking, and people in Middlesex and people in Berlin aren't looking to unload their debt. And you know, oh well, great, our taxes go way down. I think everyone wants to find if we got to go go there, what's a fair way we can do it? And no one's come up with one yet. So I think that would require. A, we want to give ourselves as much time, whether it's needed or not. If it is needed, that we've explored all kinds of options. I mean, I was kind of interested in what Janet had to say at a, at a meeting in the spring when she said, "No, there." There could be some ways. I don't know what it was, but there's she, a, she there's was alluding I tell you, to some flexibility there. I tell you, there actually is a way to do this. And yet, assuming we have a decent capital assessment of each building, so that we can, if we, if, what is, is it 14 years that we've gotten our, basically our current debt liability? No. What's the longest, is it 20 years? 19 for Berlin. If we take that one period, period, if we take that period, actually 18 is the additional lease. We have a capital assessment we, you know, where we pro that we project out over years, you know, based on estimated lives of you know, for replacement. And we don't have to get this exactly right, maybe just get it close. We project, you know, what that 
number is over that period of years, you know, for every school. Palace has no debt right now. We may or may not, the way it depends on whether we're accumulating money fast enough in our capital fund, but where will we spend it? We actually projected those numbers out. We, we have debt liability that in consolidation you would be absorbed that we have not accrued yet. We have to yeah, replace no, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. So we take it for that debt period. We can kind of normalize this. We would, we would be able to say now, you know, what the liability of the other towns would be absorbing. And then, then you aren't going to have a lot. You're in a new school. There's not, um, not going to be a lot of capital investment in that for a while. You know, you'll have your main team. But other schools might. I mean, we, you know, we, but that, there, that's not all that difficult, and it would give you a, probably a good enough assessment to actually come up with a very equitable okay. way. So, so that's the type I'm of not looking to solve it, but yeah. so would, I think there's some consensus on beginning to look at the governance part of it. So at least, you know. In December, we're sitting there with, well, you've got X number of days to do something other than what these are, and that's a, you got to figure two or three weeks over Christmas when it's going to be virtually impossible to do anything. So I think it's prudent to at least. Fast. Yeah. So do, do you have an uh, idea about how to get going on something like this? Well, I, I, again, I think the only way we can get started is an executive committee recommendation at the full board. September to say at the September full board and uh, um, e you know I, I, each each board have I, I don't know we've got to create a structure that people agree to and that group start doing some preliminary work on this and report back at the next however we set it up we need to set up the structure so then it can start going forward well, and there could be one for each article, or we could prioritize and pick, you know, maybe we start with bud debt and governance and get a couple groups. I mean, to my impression is debt and governance are the two major concerns. So let's, if, if that's the way we end up having to go, at least let's have a, as thought out and prepared a plan as we can go forward rather than oh, okay it's the December full board meeting what are we going to do and this all has to be done in two months so it'll be done we'll, by February we'll sometime. Just end up adopting and then we're we're, as uh, to remember one recommended. we're in trouble. Um, <laughs> if you we've got a good I mean, one of the good things that's come out of this whole advice process is that there you know, some really good, you know, good team. We've learned a lot about working together. A lot of them, that's clear. I mean, but if this, this has come a whole long way, coming I mean, out of such a divisive issue. You know, I don't, you know, I think given the team of people we've got, I don't think that's going to be all that difficult to find this kind of consensus. I, mean, I don't I think sure we either, but wait. We, yeah, yeah, we don't want to wait any longer. So I just made a note that in your September executive committee, you definitely want to have a discussion about about the proposal to the full board for how do you want to start working on well why I don't want to this let's go back to our local boards and because I think if we got input from the local boards on what are priorities for each town to see in articles of agreement uh, then it gives some direction to the larger group and the representatives. Um, because there, there may be differences in the different towns as to uh, what they would like to see as a, um, a part of the article of agreement. Um, and you know, I think school closures is going to be a significant issue uh, in terms of how to protect that in, in a real way because the articles of agreement, um, as I understand it, if the, if the articles are not part of the ballot, in like being part of the ballot, you're voting on this specific language, then they're subject to change. There's no ballot. They're not voting on no it. And then we should vote on it because the articles would be, you know, they won't, they will, I think, misrepresent what our intentions are because a, a board could undo them mm -hmm. despite the selling to right. the right. towns. Chris, I, want, I want to get an attorney's mm -hmm. opinion on this this time. The merger for 46, but we're past any time that the electorate approves the bylaw. 
the articles of agreement. Mm -hmm. We just, I mean, they had a whole Act 46 piece, and now that we're in this part of it, the electorate doesn't have input, doesn't have an approval of the bylaws. Who does? Well, these are articles of agreement, not and, bylaws. And that's what I'm saying. Even articles of agreement that, that in 46, they're come, this is why the state has the approval of either what we write or we use the ones they give us from the state board. So who would approve? State. State board. So our board would submit yeah. proposed articles. If I'm remembering that correctly, I could be wrong. Mm -hmm. So, um, but I but, wanna, but, but, but still, still, your point is, do we want to have some local board discussion about parameters for the articles before the September executive committee meeting, or we're we'll we going to be maybe have, making a recommendation? We have a board meeting tomorrow night. We don't have that on the agenda. But yeah, I was say, the question is, I would, I would say, take them in parallel. I mean. Get them, you know, if we if we have an opportunity here to talk about them to begin that conversation before some boards meet, we should do it. It doesn't mean we're locked into it. Right. Let's get that feedback, but don't delay. It just be at the highest level, whatever the. Yeah, we can merge, we we can merge those thoughts. I mean, I, we don't, we have or, a limited or, people or people who do you want to represent you on this, on this body? Well, I don't, well, I made this suggestion so that we can move tonight. What, why doesn't it be incumbent on me? At our September executive committee meeting, I will bring forward a specific proposal, and maybe not specifically what um, um, articles of agreement we would talk on, but a structure that would allow. What if it allowed for th immediate progress to start on three articles of agreement, and then it would take this many bodies. You know, I I'll make it up that there's one rep from each. Board, so that's 15 people that would be needed to work on three articles of agreement. Someone could be on multiple boards. But bring in that structure as a starting place to start. And then if it's um, if it's four, then we multiply it out. And our local boards, as the executive committee members, we can bring it up to say, if it was three, what would our top three be? And then when we come in here, we bring that information back and say, okay, we've got three. We'll plug one here, one here, one here. That's the structure we're off and going. I'll bring in some kind of a structure to start the discussion. Then the discussion doesn't have to be how we're going to do it. The discussion be, can be what are the priorities of what we're going to approach. What do people think? Is the yeah, September we'll full board meeting a carousel? Yes. So then. We break up Im immediately after. We could and elect right. and, representatives. And we could get going. That sounds good. And we've got an executive committee meeting before that. Before we before right. yeah. I'd be willing to do the structure part of it. I, mean, I don't think there's, there's any harm it's, it's in any of you talking about that with the local boards. Mm -hmm. The only one that's out is Berlin. It doesn't mean anything. Well, there's a meeting on the 10th. We're going to have that meeting for the boards on the 10th of September. We are. Well, you seem like you were there, so. Okay. And I can talk about that some more. Yes. yes. Well, I think from Carol's that would probably be Okay. If I was reading it correctly. <laughs> that was very I think Carrie's moving <laughs> on. <laughs> I think we need to. I think we've got uh, still, what, board goals to talk about? So um, the first one is the board governance and operations. And um, I to remind myself what we had agreed to on this, but basically exploring um, governance systems. And to that end, we have this guide going around. A couple people have read it. I, I'm giving my new course. Yes, I heard you say it. Um, and we are actually in charge of this goal. Uh, so I'm just reminding myself of the timeline here. We are supposed to be working on it says the WCSU boards evaluate how they operate and inve investigate alternative board operating practices. We have six months to do that. Plus now. So that sounds to me like some sort of reflection. I haven't talked to Matthew at all about this. I'm no. not really sure he has mind. Some sort of reflection on what are we doing, how is it working, and then an exploration of what else is out there, such as policy government. I think that that was more of the point to have a discussion tonight about what you brought, what people were able to take a read of there, if there was something else people were in, 
wanted to look at. Um, the only other governance system that I know of is the United Way governance system, which is very, it's policy, it's similar to policy governance, but a little different. Um, the, and so it was a way of talking about I mean, what, what people, and then we started out in June talking about, well, let's do some learning together. What does it mean about our current government system? Homegrown Vermont. I, don't, I wouldn't call it a system. Okay, so is there any other, I mean, other than policy governance, uh, the policy governance model, are there other models? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Uh, I, you know, anyway, is, okay. is one that I know of. What I've else? Looked it up. There are three or four others, and I have to look internationally for them. The U.S. is very weak on governance systems, whether mm -hmm. it's private or public. So, so in amongst Vermont schools, they're either using policy governance, which is probably the minority. There's yeah. about ten or twelve SU slash SDs that. Oh, they're doing their own thing. Or they're doing their own thing. There are some people that would say that policy governance that probably wouldn't put in that ten or twelve, but they're not following. Harvard makes a really good point in his work. It was even take a whole where you're not doing. That's his opinion. Well, he, no hybrid approaches. Yeah, no hybrid approaches. Um, but there are, I mean, I, to me, it's principles of good governance. I mean, that's where I would want to come down. Less on the model, but what are the principles of good governance? And Could I make a recommendation? Please. We've got until December to explore models. We've been presented with one model. For our next executive committee meeting, can we be presented with another model? Because from June to December, we're supposed to be evaluating and, and investigating alternative board operating practices. So, so far, we've only been presented with one alternative. If in September we get an alternative, and then at the next executive meeting, we get another alternative, then at least we've got what we're doing, and we would have seen three other alternatives. And then we could have a coherent discussion on we've got four different models, you know, by December, what would our recommendation be? I can't make a recommendation until I've got something to bench against. And if it's just going to be this and what we've got, then that's fine. Yeah. We can bench against it. I can definitely get you in any way. I think I know where that is. Because I, I, think, I think we could just move on if yeah. people are like, Let's get another alternative to look at. Again, these exist. I'll turn mine in again so that people can borrow it. And then in September, we'll have another alternative that we can look at. Sound good? Sounds great. So it's a piece of homework for you. I got it. I'm right down. OK. I talked a little bit about goal two. Didn't even show up on the agenda here. I think we've basically got a, a plan of attack. It's going to mean some board time or agenda time mm -hmm. in October at least. So we'll talk more about that, flush that out next time. And then the last one is community engagement. <clears throat> um, so we did not end up talking about engagement at the retreat. In September we are supposed to provide input on the purpose a board level community engagement. That was really the goal of this was to come to an agreement on what is the purpose of engagement. Um, and everyone's responsible, which always runs the risk of no one being responsible. Well, I think that the local board's responsible for that. Right? I think it's just making sure it's on the agenda of all the local board meetings. Yeah, but I think the local board is supposed to. Yeah, yeah they're yeah. supposed to. What are we asking? To, to think about the purpose of community engagement? Yeah, and then at the September 4 board meeting, the local board is supposed to provide input on the purpose of community engagement. I mean, that's the way I read it. Community engagement is a two-way street, I mean, ensuring that we are meeting the needs of the community and the, and the community making, you know, feeding us with ideas to make sure that we're doing it the best way we can. You know, it's, you 
fatal abuse for utilizing that resource of mind and are we and validating the fact that we're serving our communities properly. So, um, so can you we, we can all make a commitment to get this on the agenda for our local board meetings in September and be prepared to provide input in the next mm -hmm. yeah. uh, I think that Bill you can just do that with your chairs on right, the right, agenda. Right. right. I mean, you try to have the conversation in the night about it. Mean, do we need to frame up the conversation? I, I like I like what the, the way you were saying I'm sorry, I'm cheating off your card, but uh, provide an input on the purpose of the a board level community engagement. I think for the board members to each think about that. Mm -hmm. And then it's kind of the grassroots the same way we did the student learning outcomes. What does that mean to each what does that mean to each board individual? Mm -hmm. What does that mean to each board? What does that mean to the board that year? I think we're gonna find we're probably pretty common places other than my uh, what I know each board it's gonna be that now it'd be great to have that just state this is what we, we believe in. And we should also have this and how we do it. That's the next, next piece. right? That's the next piece. <laughs> just to clear up what this Okay, so if it's okay with everyone, we'll move on to 2.4 special <coughs> education hiring process. We refresh her. So back in uh, somewhere in March or February and March, we had a conversation at the board about the special ed hiring process. And we talked about um, the local boards and the integration of the local boards and the executive committee mm -hmm. and how we want to do that. And Matthew had asked the question, um, you know, where are each board, where is each board with the hiring process and what does each board want to do um, with the hiring of special educators, knowing that um, the procedures that we use internally that we have. Um, and we didn't come to consensus then, and it had been tabled by the board. Okay. And so we tried to do it in April and May, and Matthew said, I want to make sure Chris is there, because there was a kind of, I'm just going to state what I saw and tell me if I'm wrong, but there seemed to be some agreement, but Chris, uh, the, it didn't seem, it wasn't even an anonymous agreement across the board. Across the table. Okay. So um, it seemed to be let's have more conversation about it and think about this. And so it's, it's kept coming back on the agenda, but Matthew keeps tabling because he wanted to ensure, Chris, that you were part of the conversation. I haven't missed that many meetings. Mm -hmm. like, I, 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 I know I missed the last one, but uh, it's been tabled forever. Yeah, that's been a couple, a couple of times. But um, so that, that's why it's, uh, it's come back up and we kept doing that. Um, Matthew was facilitating that conversation. I feel it's actually not appropriate. I think it's good when I don't facilitate that conversation. Mm -hmm. um, so, it may have to be tabled. so it may have to be tabled again. But um, I think it's really about, um, you know, we use a process, and you're all aware of the process. It's the same in all schools of how we do the local, it's local folks that are in the higher community. Uh, there's teaching pieces, and, uh, there's demo lessons, and there's several that that's something that we can or to the situation. Because I've had times, I had this past year, one of the principals, we, I'm fine with her sending me one candidate. She said, Bill, I'm really kind of standing here to you. Can you do the whole thing? But that doesn't happen that long. It's usually one, one that can lead to the, to the more. And you stayed with the agreement as we were just about to we'll talk about this um, teacher for Berlin, as we just did, you know, talk with the local board about it. And with Rumby being one place where there's an interview done by the way. It's uh, people's pleasure. Can we hold into it tonight or wait until September? I think I'd rather wait to September. Let me uh, let me say the board and the Rumby board has talked about it and then maybe um, depending upon the vote, a change in, in that process. Um, but I, I do favor uh, the board meeting a teaching candidate um, because teachers have been in a part of our community and uh, it's, it's and you know what actually one of the teaching candidates this summer both thanked us and said well thank you for having me up here which I must say did not and happened 
talk before, um, but I think it's also just good to get a face, a face, see, see who's going to be in your school. Uh, and uh, I think even if it's brief, there we had like three interviews this summer, and then no more than five or ten minutes each. A bunch of little bit of face time and uh, knowledge. So, how do we find that balance in you know, that hiring? And I, I would this to myself, and it's good and bad, you know, but. You know, it's in, in the local hiring. There can also be biases if it's a local kid, you know. But by the time they get to us, Kennedy. They are. But yeah. I mean, what I what we want to always make sure is that we bring in, you know, that ideal candidate the best skills in the ground. We want the right personality to the right match. How do we find that middle ground where we, where we kind of have that vetting, but we want that... We want this to match the lives of local community, but we also don't want to have, uh, we want to make sure that they've been vetted by the proper, that proper level of skill and quality that we may might not see. I'm just thinking about myself. I'm not a special educator. So. And, I, and I'm, I'm a big person for making sure they match the community when they do. But also I'm conscious, I have seen the callous, you know, where that, in, Long past, where we had issues about that, where we, you know, we hired, um, we didn't hire the best person at the end, in person, too personal, and that, that's what I get nervous about. You know, we need this is where we need that professional vetting, and kind of enough of a check in there that we're able to ensure that we're really, you know, our own personal biases are not going to kind of lead us astray. I don't know if I'm being clear with that. But well, but the vetting process or it, it, it occurs right. by, the by the time, time we, see, we them. see them. So it's, it's um, true. You know, it's already been done. You're the last stop. We are the last stop. And, and it's more approval at that point. Yeah, yeah, more or less. I mean, there was, I will say that there was uh, occasion this has come back many, many years uh, where the uh, we used to ask for two candidates. Uh, and. Um, we usually went with the recommendation of the superintendent, uh, but in one instance, we did not uh, in, in terms of kindergarten teacher. It was before Bill's time, uh, I think, right? Yes. Yeah. They did not have it. We had it. Yeah, we had the system. Yeah, um, I said, yeah, in my time, but. <laughs> in, that's right. Um, and, and, uh, and it actually was, it was kind of a little bit of a bold move because there was a gender issue in terms of the kindergarten teacher, and it, it actually worked out really well. I mean, a very good teacher. You know. And uh, we've done a lot of benign logical analysis, not just yeah, you know, yeah. kindergarten. Not any secrets, but you would have to do an assessment of any time the board went against the recommendation because you might have got it right once, but you might have got it wrong three I, times. Well, I, I think that's the only time we really went like, back I, I'm just saying, yeah. in fairness, you, no, you I agree. can't just I agree. pick I can't pick the <laughs> yeah, cherry pick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I agree. Okay. Um, but, okay. But but I, I, well, that sets it up for next next time, and we'll have, uh, have that discussion. Okay. Good. Great. So that brings us back to 3.1 or 3.0. Yeah, 3.0. Uh, it's a higher, and Krista, as you saw, ran in with uh, non forms for all of you. So there, are there two here? Uh, this one. I already had the other one. And the rest are coming down. Oh, there. Well, we're, we're only being asked. <laughs> <out. laughs> yes. So, Amy Eccles, um, she's worked at. Um, She's worked at Eden this past year, but then she was in, um, in Sp at Spalding for six years, and prior to that, Laraway and uh, Lamar North as a sub. But um, Amy comes to us with a wealth of experience, highly recommended for her work with students. Um, and, uh, I met Amy on Tuesday. This happened while I was away, and um, as I expressed earlier, we had had a person in the position. Um, and they had already committed to us and then pulled out a month and a half later. So we had spent the past three months just trying to find a special education to fill in. But we won't hire if they're not qualified. Mm -hmm. We had a couple others that we said no to as we got down to the end of the process. Because when someone's not qualified, it's not really You see, this was only a one year non This is a one year non renewal past July 1. Um, mm -hmm. uh, our contract, we have an agreement with the association that after July 1, it's in one year. Doesn't mean they won't okay. continue, okay. but it doesn't mean that we're guaranteed to pass this year. Okay. And after July one, that's a good practice. Okay. 
And it's pretty common. We saw this on Monday night, and I'll just say that our new principal, Aaron Boynton, who was on the interview committee, um, spoke very highly of this candidate. So she seemed like a great person and excited to hopefully hire her. Was there a nomination? Or I mean, uh, I'll make a motion to hire Sorry. Amy Tackles um, as a special educator. Second. I'll second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Yes, we can. Thank you. I don't know again. Suspension. Okay, future items. Anything? I have a September. Maybe 46. Uh, yeah. I have a September to talk about um, plane uh, on Twinfield. I start calling it okay. on Twinfield. Twinfield. And then also uh, uh, there was, Steve's going to bring a proposal about how to maybe get started looking at Articles and agreement. Yeah. Um, I also have to bring on my checklist. Um, I'm get, I wrote down United Way governance models. That's probably the easiest one for me to tap into first. Mm -hmm. uh, and if I can use that before the meeting, there's actually a website. So my wants to bring any feedback that we might be able to get from the boards on articles. The areas, yeah. Is, yeah, we can try to squeeze that in more. I mean, if, if we're, if we yeah, because it's just a discussion. Right. Uh, we're not going to take it there. Okay. I think and Bill, just, okay. I'll speak for me and hopefully I'm going to adopt Bringing forward this other alternative governance. I mean, I don't expect you to bring books. It, it, it can be a couple Actually, page summary. If I know website. exactly, if I know where it is, if I, if I, because I think I do, yeah. but things change on the Just internet. Send us the link. I'm gonna be sending you a link. That's right away. That's no good governance. That's fine. <laughs> See, <laughs> See this. Because they last time I did that, I just need to get an idea. I remember the impression will be this thing. It's shown to us as an example of a desired outcome. Is there a mention of desired outcome? It's so it's similar so it's similar. Yeah. Okay. If I keep the group for another week or so? Okay. I have one that I'll be returning to the office. Yeah, you I have a category, yeah. You do. Okay. Is there another? There's a third copy, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. You said you'll you'll I'll, I'll, oh. uh, I'll turn mine in so it'll be there Friday, Dorothy. Okay. I'll have to bring it if it's at work, so I'll have to bring it from work and I'll drop it off tomorrow. After work, so it'll be there Friday. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.